We're live on YouTube finally. You know, Red, we've been just on Facebook and uh, and X for the last. That's why we got seven likes on Facebook. Now the numbers. I'm wondering why the hell we only have ten people sitting here. I'm thinking that does Red Red and I don't want to. Nobody wants to watch Red and I anymore. Hey guys, coming in. Welcome. It's YouTube uh, Mob Vlog Live. Red and I are going to have to start this whole conversation over. This is the second time we've done this in our careers. <laughs> we were like, oh, we're live and we're talking for it's 12 19. We've been talking for almost 15 minutes. Holy uh, shit, Red. Are you serious? You know this, you know what this is like? Deja vu. Yes, it is. Correct. So welcome back, everybody. It's uh Mob Vlog, and uh it's Red Lamet and Adam Flowers. We are live. It is April 10th still. <laughs> Since <laughs> the time has changed the date. Uh, I would you know what did it? It's the eclipse. The eclipse had that's what it mob vlog. You're gonna have to trim the first 10 minutes of this out of here. <laughs> We're done, all right. Welcome back, guys. We're here to talk about Easter. And uh, the heist that happened in uh, Silmar, Silmar, California, $30 million, Red. They cut a hole in the roof of the building, dropped in there, opened up the vault, took the money out, then busted a big hole in the wall. Sound familiar? They bust a big <laughs> hole in the wall and probably with a fork truck, picked this shit up and took it took it out. Julie M., thank you so much for uh, letting us know that, uh, that we... That we fucked up. Thank you. <laughs> Julie is the greatest. On YouTube. Uh, Rob Murphy, welcome in. David Grimpy, uh, Benedict Mastriani, Luminous Grin. There's everybody. Rico Suave, uh, Kevin Rathert, and uh, Mickey Griggs. Welcome in, guys. It's good to have you guys with us today. And uh, we're going to talk about this heist. Damn. You, Go USA says, good to see you. I thought you forgot about us with the eclipse. No, you guys, we're early today. We're early today. Uh, we, we thought we'd put something up and just talk about it because it is Wednesday. And Red and I plan on doing this. We just had to start early today because uh, people got things to do called making money. You know what I mean? Making the big money. Frick is sold out tour today. I can't I can't believe it. Wow. So got to go Got to go down there and, uh, and hit that. So. Yes, everybody. Thirty million dollars. What would you do with it, Red? If you stole thirty million dollars, you, you, you fill up a pickup truck or a, a dump truck full of money. Now, what do you do with it? You got to go sort that shit out somewhere, right? Oh, definitely not in this country. First thing you do is buy a plane. <laughs> how about how about the the armored? What's that? Lisa plane. Lisa plane. You know what they did here in uh, Vegas. The um, tall chief was her name. Tall chief. She got a job at the Loomis Armored Car Center as a driver. And one day pulls up to Circus Circus, lets the two guys out. They get out to go restock the machines through Circus Circus. She's supposed to pick them up on the other side. They get to the other side. 30 minutes later, she's not there. She's over at a warehouse <laughs> unloading the money right, and then packing it into boxes to go mail. They dropped it off and mailed it to some place down there in Florida where you are and mail it to themselves and um and then get on a plane. She dresses as an old lady because they're looking for a young woman. So she dressed as an old lady with the babushka and got the glasses on and she gets onto the plane, private plane, by the way. Yeah. Right. And, and they boom, 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 bounce back and forth across the country, then end up in Mexico. What would you do with $30 million? You can't box that up. $3 million, I think that's what she got away with, or two and a half, something like that. I don't know. You know, most of it was in $100. How can pigs eat? <laughs> hogs choke and pigs eat. Oh, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Yeah. Same thing, but yeah, twisted it around a little bit. That's a lot of money. 30 million. I, I don't know how you can spend 30 million. I really don't. I'll figure it out. <laughs> ah, DL Freighter, the FBI will get right on this as soon as they're done arresting praying grannies. <laughs> uh, DL no Freighter, 
Watcher, thanks for uh, tuning in. I think that's the first time we've seen you on the show. Um, <laughs> rent storage sheds like Walter White. There you go. See, got to get down there, land Breaking bad, you know what I'm saying? Just get some storage sheds, fill them full of money. That's an, that's an idea. You just go over there, open it up every once in a while, take out a couple stacks, you know? One day you go open it up and guess what? You got robbed. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, see? When you don't have it, you worry about how to get it. And then when you got it, you got to worry about how to keep it. How to hang on to it. You That's know? right. Because you know somebody's going to come looking for your money. You're walking around driving brand new cars and all. Shit. Somebody's be like, hey, you know, got, a red, got some money over there. Let's go check out. Where <laughs> oh, look where Red goes. She goes to the storage shed every fifth day. Pulls out some more money, you know. Let's go rob it. Come on. It's not, it's, it's not uh, yeah. A uh, DL Freighter. She doesn't usually get to watch live. Well, uh, in her, she sure looks like a girl. Could be his wife. Could be his girlfriend. If they, her, are, no. if they were very clever, they would yeah. uh, have an account opened in an Antilles, Netherlands, and go ahead and drop it in that account because they have no jurisdiction with uh, uh, the United States. You can put any kind of currency in there you want, and you can get it out in any kind of currency you want. And take your debit card for 30 million dollars yeah <laughs> everybody gets a debit card and they can do whatever they want so they don't even know where the money how much the money's there how much is there they can't even look at the accounts no so you're better off you pay somebody down there to take care of it for you so here's a little quick quick little scam a way to move some money around um, just talking to my buddy last night and, uh, he said, you know, you, you go and you, he says, just, just, this is just a, a hypothetical situation. Okay. Let's say that you, um, that you got a million dollars in stones and you get this million dollars and you gotta somehow turn that million dollars, right? in stones into money you're talking about 200 grand in cash uh, how do you how do you do that how do you how do you launder wash the money somebody that wants to pay for those mm -hmm. stones but they're not going to pay what the value is because they're going to have they're going to have to cut it up or ship them to divide it up they're going to sit on it for a while too yeah they're hot no matter what uh the, the least they could get arrested for or busted for is uh, possession of stolen property. So they're going to have to sit on it. They're taking the risk. For that risk, they're going to probably only give you maybe 200 grand for a million. Bigfoot Turkey, please button up your shirt, Adam. Why? What's wrong with my shirt? Yeah. I'm not sure how I roll my shirt. Take my shirt off if I want. You want to see me take my Back and thunder down under. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chippendales. Don't like my hairy chest. Actually, that's it. That's all the hair I got right there. It's all good. Hey, guys, check this out. You can go on mobmento.com and you can buy a gun. It's a USB gun. You see this? It's a USB gun. And um, it contains a 90-minute interview with Frank Collada. It contains a 60-minute interview with Frank Collada. All produced by Vegas Specialty Tours. And uh, you can purchase one of these. It also has nine hours of, of, of audio files of Frank and some extras, little pictures and whatnot that were on Frank Collada's phone. You can purchase all of those on mobmento.com. You guys actually I shipped a few of them out. And it's funny, but I sold one the other day to a fella from Chicago Heights. And he bought it on the tour. And... The next morning, he's going back home to fly to Midway Airport, and he called me on the phone. He called me, and he said, Adam, he said, I'm calling you. I was on the tour yesterday. You sold me a gun. He said, I'm down here at, Mc um, not McCarran, sorry, Harry Reid Airport. I'm going to, no, fuck it, it's McCarran. So he's down there at McCarran Airport, and he's in the police station. He's telling me I'm in the police station. TSA got his ass. This gun right here. You see this? <laughs> USB stick, okay? 
Not only that, I got to ship the guy another gun. You know why? They took it. They confiscated it from him. Those fuckers at TSA, I hope you enjoy the videos. I do, because I know you guys are watching them. You had to. If you turned them on, you went, this is a damn good video. And I'm going to have to ship another one to my uh, to my friend in Chicago Heights. That's so, obscene. That's thanks obscene. a lot, TSA. Thanks that, a lot. That's yeah. a firearm. That's a finger in there. A finger in there to fire it. I mean, forget it. Honestly. Thank God they're civilians. <laughs> Honest to God, man. Oh, a gun could be that small. You think if they need a gun that small, what the finger up? Hold your finger up to show us the size. Hold your finger. Yeah. <laughs> it's the size of my finger, man. That's, that's, that's laughing. You know why? What kind of bullet would fit in there? A BB. A BB. Even a BB wouldn't fit. A BB with how, how are you gonna make that? Come on. Honest guy. You know, I got a little four shot um uh Derringer. It's a four shot little four shot Derringer, my my father's. And I don't even know if it works. I've never fired it. I'm almost afraid to fire the thing, okay? But it's got four barrels, man. And they're like it's like this small, it's tiny, but it, it's not quite this small. <laughs> no. Who would see that through? Oh, that's the gun. I have a I have a uh, couple of Derringers. I've got a a twenty two uh, Derringer over and under, and a nine millimeter Derringer over over and under, and a forty five Derringer over and under, and a three fifty seven, which can be used for thirty eight. But I'll tell you something: use the three fifty seven or forty five. That thing jumps out of your hand. Sure. I mean, sure. You, you're not going to kill anybody with it, oh, man. Yeah. It jumps right out of your hand. Victor Huber. It's been a long time, Adam. Red. That's a lady pistol. I don't even know if this is a lady pit. Dude, this is so small. How would it even be? Ay, ay, ay. They could have it in your mouth. <laughs> you could take that in your mouth. <laughs> no, you could. You could. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to no. do that. Here. It's something clean like. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it's that's not. We shouldn't do that on air. All right. So anyway. Christopher Montesanti. Hey, Adam Red. It's always great to see you guys. The legend of Frank Collada lives on through this podcast, and also the legendary Chicago outfit is omnipotent and omnipresent. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Rip, whenever are we going to talk about this heist? Yes, let's go back to the heist. So, $30 million. They bust through the ceiling. They go out through the wall. At least that's what they're thinking, right? I mean, they wouldn't go in through the wall and up through the ceiling. You're going to drop down and then walk out. So that'd be the easiest way to do it. How do you get around the motion detectors, the security cameras, the seismograph? The I mean, Come on. They got sensors, don't they? And, and on top of all that, there's a telephone pole. And on the telephone pole, you have to know which wires to get. And once you cut the wires, that's it. So you, Jay, they went up there and snip, snip, snip. You got to know which wires to cut, though. Yeah. Carl Walters, what's up, gangsters? Love your show. Love you, too, Carl. Thanks for tuning in. Ultra Cowboy, remember, unbutton your shirt when you have four, oh, my God, four <laughs> Bud Light. <laughs> Listen, Ultra Cowboy, what you need to do, you need to wake the fuck up. All right. By the way, you can go, you can go to frankcolada.com and you can buy a wake the fuck up coffee cup. And all the proceeds go directly to the show. So if you want to support the channel, go get a wake the fuck up cup. Why not? <laughs> Why not? No, I'm serious. You're right. It's the channel, it makes us money. So we need to do that. Van Pasterman, these criminals had thought it through. No shit, man. They, you know they thought it through. This was planned out for months. I would say they, more than maybe a year. Really? Yeah, that long. This oh, is yeah. something you, for $30 million, you're talking about we're going to have enough money for the rest of our lives. This is the last big score. We're never going to do another one. Because you had to. This is the number one. This is something these guys got away with for a long time. What do you think? Yeah. They, they, yeah. Have, to, they have to have done it before, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, you would think so. Benjamin, there was the first time at the rodeo. <laughs> and I, I can't help but think that they didn't look through history and say, you know, we could do this just like uh, the whole wall gang did it in Las Vegas. We can go through the roof like they were doing on Bertha's. And they probably got away with Bertha's if they didn't know it was happening. Come on, the hole in the wall. Red, the hole in the wall game wasn't the first freaking people to bust through a roof or a wall. They were or the a or something and up into it. You got a box. There's only so many ways into the box, right? Uh, you, you, you know, I mean, ah, hole in the wall game was not original. Well, according according to the reports, yeah. <laughs> when the guy opened the vault and walked into it, he was surprised that it was empty. <laughs> Didn't they notice the hole in the wall? I yeah. Mean, and they walk in and go, fuck, it's raining in here. You know? <laughs> they must have gone right into the vault. Really? You don't walk in and go, shit, man. Why is there sunlight coming in through the ceiling they, over here? There's a skylight where we didn't put one. They probably went right into the vault through the ceiling. Right, in. right, right in. Okay, so you, you go tunnel, boom, into the vault. Now, how do you open the door to get out of that thing, to go through the wall? They didn't. Then they, why is there a hole in the wall? The guy opened the vault. with It was on a time lock or something like that. The guy opened the vault and said, there's nothing here. I get it. I understand that. On Monday morning, that's what happened. But on Sunday, when they busted the hole in the roof and went into the vault. Now, why did they leave a hole in the side of the building? They had to take the money out. How did they get it out of the vault, Red? I don't know. I they had to open the vault. How do you open the vault from the inside? Oh, the, the on, even Houdini knows there's no way yeah. to open the vault from the inside, okay? Yeah, insides are easy going in from the inside, but uh, uh, opening it from the inside is a lot easier than opening it from the outside. No, it's yeah. harder. Come on, you got a dial on the outside. On the inside, you got shit. You got a, you got metal. There's no working thing right. there. If you got the right tools, you could open it. So you think they open it from the inside? Oh, definitely. I can't wait to hear if something like this actually, if, if they actually figure this out, catch these guys. That's going to be very, very interesting. Do you remember that? I forget what the name of the show was. George Papard used to be on the show. And they used to go and they would figure out how things were done. Okay. How, how they pull off this great heist. How mm -hmm. they And he would, uh, they paid him like... Uh, I don't know. He got 20% or something like that for actually figuring it out. Insurance companies hired him. But somebody like that may figure this out. I doubt it. See, did you, did you hear about that one that happened in South America? I don't know if it was in Peru, but they went up the um, the uh, uh, storm drains. And they rafts up the storm drains for, for like several blocks to this place. And then they started tunneling up the storm drains to the side of the building. And the night of the deal, it was they went up, they went into the place. Nobody knew about it until they came in, and the you know the next day, and, and they emptied it, set safety deposit boxes, all this, and then what took it back in the wrap. They didn't go back out the storm drain, they went further up the stream, which the authorities wouldn't think you would do, up through another into the bottom of a van. They got the bottom of it cut out so they can load everything up through the storm drain without anybody seeing, and. You know, and then boom, there they they drive off, and that's it. They got another thing to be noted about that. Caught, by the way, I don't want to. They got caught because in their preparation, one of them brought a one of the women along, and she's the one. See, it causes problems. <laughs> <laughs> but something that I don't, we haven't discussed it. But on Easter weekend, they had all the time in the world. They could have been in there on Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they could have. Yeah. How do they know it was Easter? Right. They, it could have been if they don't know who did it or when it happened. Then how the hell do they know when it happened? It could have been Friday night. They could have been there Saturday night. They could have been there Friday night. They could have been there all weekend moving that money out. Yeah. But if they do it on Sunday, they say it's Sunday. Then they can say the Easter Bunny did it. <laughs> California. <laughs> Easter Bunny did it. You know? Yeah. Shit. Who's not going to believe that? Some person dressed up in a big furry outfit stole from the... Come on. St not stole. I'm sorry. I saw that Chicago shit coming out. They stole. He thiefed. 
<laughs> chief. 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 He's chief. He's a chief. He's a chief. The All right. The theft. The theft. The theft. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adam Flowers, Midwest, Midwestern Thomas Lavicia. Thank you. Oh, you talking about the, the shirt again there, Mike? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, Adam, would you ever consider inviting the son from the Family Secrets trial, the guy who testified against his father? You talking he about Frank Calabrese Jr.? We've had him on. He's been on. He's been on. Look look at the old, old, uh, old, uh, old broadcast. He's been on. We had him on. He told his story. David Grimpy had a break in – hold on. Had to break in – then break out of the safe. Yeah. Had to break into it and then out of it and then go through the wall and then have some kind of, I don't know, a dump truck to load $50 million. Well, I'm assuming that's what happened because what are they going to do? Take it out the front door? No, they went out through the wall. You see it all. It was all barricaded up there. It's the news chopper saw that and that's how they figured out that something happened. <laughs> Safes are made to keep people from getting in, not getting out. That's correct. Okay, Red. All right, you got a point. Christopher Memes, same hole in, same hole. Hold on. Same hole in, same hole out of the vault, then out the wall into truck. Hold on. Same hole in, same hole out of the vault. Uh, all right, so maybe they dropped in through the top. Then put the money, instead of putting it on the roof, they just dumped it off the side of the, the, the vault. What was this, a big metal container inside? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with vault, how they construct them. Is a vault constructed? Because you got to know to get into the fucker, you got to know how to how it was built. That way, you know the weak points. Most of, most of the time, it's a uh, cast concrete. It's cast concrete all the way around, and it's rebarbed, and then they have metal plates on it in different places. It's really difficult. You can't get through it. So they put a, a big door on it that locks it in place. It's a room. It's a big room. It's as big as a concrete room, rebar enforced room, basically. Right. So you're not going to do anything. You There's can, no metal plate. To they, like, yeah, they do, they put metal on them, but uh, it's that metal is not good enough. So they use concrete. They'll pour the concrete, and they'll build a vault. Then they build a vault door, which is a locking door. It's probably um, about at least that thick. Yeah, six to eight inches thick. They, Red, that's not six to eight inches. All right, you tell all the girls that's six to eight inches. That ain't six to eight inches. All right, it's like three to four inches. Uh, just so you know your measurements, all right? When you tell a girl six to eight inches, don't put your fucking hands this close together because that ain't six to eight inches. <laughs> fucking sharpie, dude. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this uh, is just. <laughs> Four inches right there. That cigarette pack is four inches. Is it really? Oh, my God. Stop. 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 This is a family show. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gabby Rodriguez. Hello, Adam and Red and everybody. Hello, Gabby. Hope you're having a good, good day. You're right. It's four inches. <laughs> I told you it's four inches. I know what six inches is, okay? They, when I was on the job site, they'd say, just lay your dick across this twice. And that'd be 12 inches, Adam. And I said, okay. And they're like, see, that's how you teach a Polak how to measure. <laughs> <Ever since. laughs> oh, stop it, Red. Look at you're making me red. You're making me fucking red, man. My mom asked me if I was suntanning the other day. Uh yeah, there oh, look, he's got his measuring tape out. Red, put the measuring tape away. Honest to God. Everybody already saw you go, this is six inches. All right. <laughs> uh, camera angle. <laughs> oh, the camera makes it look bigger. It adds 15 pounds. Now, look at this. It's adding 15 pounds to my fat ass. Uh, Christopher Malton Santi, let's get back to the show. What's about these European guys? The so-called Pink Panther dude who busted vaults from the inside by burrowing tiny holes into the vault. They've done it a number of times. It was surprisingly easy. What yeah, they left, they left a pattern. This place, they didn't leave any. They didn't leave a footprint. Anything. Huh. Nothing. A hole, a hole in the roof and a hole in the wall. Money's gone. That's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. Easter Bunny buying Fabergé eggs. 
Those are those decorated eggs in uh right that are in the museum. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Russian, uh, Russian ones. I think I said that right. That's uh French, isn't it? Fabergé. Yeah. Okay. Hi Adam and Red. The Kraut, he found us. Yeah, we're a little early today, guys. Um, so but welcome in uh, everybody. It's good to see you. Um, okay, DL Freighter Watcher. The list of usual suspects must be sharp. That's what I say. Who'd be able to organize and pull off that kind of heist? Again, doesn't the FBI... Okay, listen. We got the NSA. We got the CIA. We got the FBI. We got all these fucking organizations in this country that are supposed to be listening to shit, making sure that guys don't go, hey, I'll let's all grab some airplanes. Okay? That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to listen for keywords, things like airport bomb. When you put that shit together... Then all of a sudden, the red flag goes up, and they go, well, we better listen to this a little bit more. Didn't somebody hear, hear $30 million? Not if they all met in one spot. $30 million? These guys had to have been so organized to, to pull this off, right? They had to no communication, no walkie-talkies, no FAA. No, You know what I mean? Is it FAA? FCC, rather. Well, these three three-letter organizations. You don't want any of this shit hearing Why can't I come up with how to do this? No, no. I want to have these little guns. Here. He he must have for a gun. <laughs> 40 bucks. Go get a gun. Don't take it through the airport. You'll get you get flagged by TSA. Mm. Unbelievable. You know, I've carried those through my I'm definitely calling out to Las Vegas and I'm gonna complain about the TSA there. I put these in a little tray, man. They're on my pocket in a little tray with my keys and shit, and walk right through. Ain't no problem. Can't Not believe it. Not only that, you can take it to the post office. They don't have a problem with it. God, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The post office has no problem. The federal post office has no problem with me putting those in the envelope and sending it to you. So why does the TSA? You know what I think? I think they got some some uh, newbies down there at the airport. No, they just want to give them a uniform and they go, "Oh, I got some authority." <laughs> I'm going to pull you over here and talk to you about this little gun in your pocket. You know why? I ain't got nothing better to do today. And they gave me this uniform badge, motherfucker. You know, let's go. It's got to be. It's shit. It's bullshit. It's not shit. Let's get back to the robbery. We're going too far off topic. Uh, uh, Red, I remember walking past your shop in the 70s, Red. Who's this? Sun, moon, and water. Did you go in there and buy something? Sun, moon, and water? I heard he had some, some good products, like like Rush. I like the restaurants in Old Town and Lincoln Park neighborhoods. I thought it decent of you not to display smut in the window. Oh, you didn't display your smut in the no. window, Red? The other ones did. Really? I did. Really? That's decent of you, man. I didn't know that. I've never, in all the years we've talked no, about I always, I, wanted, I always wanted it to be a place where it was like, uh, you didn't, it was back off the street. It was uh, 100 feet back off the street, right. and I really didn't advertise. It was one of those kind of places where if you knew it was there, fine. But uh, it, it, you could walk right by it with your children, and you didn't have to worry. It wasn't that kind of place where it was, you know, on the street. It was fine. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you didn't display the smut in your window. That's, that's awful decent of you. Somebody else just made a comment to me uh, on YouTube, left a comment. And they said uh, they knew me way back when. Uh, the last time they saw me was in 1970 or 71 on the at a deli on the north side. Uh, there was a Jewish deli I used to go to. And I was really shocked because they were so detailed about it. They did see me, but they have a moniker. I don't know their name. <laughs> and I don't know on Facebook or anything else. But it's kind of good to connect with somebody from way back when. I mean, in the 1970s, 71, that was around the time I was hanging around with uh, Tony, you know, Tony Splacho before he uh, went out to Vegas. Mickey Griggs, to get six inches, I'd have to measure once and cut twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to measure twice, cut once, not measure. Oh, I get it. I get it because he wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to lay down to six to measure twice. To, okay, I got you, Mickey. 
Some yeah. some guys some guys have good. We all got our own fucking sacks of rocks to drag around, you know. And some of us got our logs to drag as well. <laughs> Apparently, Mickey, Van Pastor, perhaps video footage of suspects will be found. There are cameras everywhere today. Bam! Van Pastor, man. Come on. There's got to be intersection cameras around that place in Silma, California going, well, here's a dump truck that drove by, didn't have anything in it. And then what? two years what? later, one drove by with a tarp over it. What if they had hundred dollars nine, nine or ten vans, like your van? Okay. And they lined them up and they just loaded oh, them up. Next mm -hmm. Next, next. And they all go through. different directions out, right? So they all go through different intersections and different. Now they're not looking for one big truck. Now it's a bunch of small vehicles. Yeah, it's a smart way to do it. 12 vans. But now look at how many guys you got involved. But then again, you got $30 million. So <laughs> you can back that up, you know, at least 10 ways and everybody's still happy. $3 million a piece. 10 people. Everybody needs to be paid, right? Yes. All um, right. They had to have some inside info help. They were they were pur uh, purported motion sensors. There were purported motion sensors, cameras, etc. At loose oh, activated all of them. Keeping your mouth shut, ears and eyes open can pay dividends. Why does it sound to me like the crowd? The crowd must have some kind of criminal past. He has to. <laughs> now, come on. You know what I mean? The the stuff this guy said. Julia, TSA in Vegas took my small souvenir snow globe from me. Um, Come on, Julie. Are you serious? Should I tell the story? No, you know, I'll tell the story some other time. I need to have the actual the, the show the scissors that they let me through. Yeah, yeah no, I, I got to have them to show them everybody. You guys wouldn't believe what TSA let me through with, with my shit story. I wouldn't believe it either. Unless you, you wouldn't believe it, but they did. They did. They 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 let me through. So I and it's I had a pair of fucking scissors this long, nine inches. You see, I read that's nine inches. You get that? That's six. That's four. That's nine. It's twelve. Okay. Nine inches. <laughs> the fag red's got a measuring tape sitting next to him. And we didn't have this planned. We didn't talk about this, but red right up here with the measuring tape. That's a big pair of scissors, man. Holy cripes, guys. How much money did they give away with? $30 million, Rebecca Berry. Um, and please don't like and prescribe. That's right. Hit the like button. Don't forget to do that. Seeing how we forgot to go live for 15 minutes when we first started the show, Rod. <laughs> We're only live on Facebook. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Lee rolling along says nine inches is like he's measuring a fish. <laughs> yeah. It was this big. I caught one this big. <laughs> <laughs> That's red. God bless you, Leanne. <laughs> Weighed 15 pounds. Gary Mushinsky, red. Weren't you also a couple of doors down from one of two male cast only theaters in the city? The Bijou. The Bijou was a it was a male only theater. That was at 1349 Northwells. Gotcha. Early I, I was at 1345. Next door to me was the Over 21 Bookstore, which was uh, 1347. Right next to that was 1349. Yes. And the yeah. B had all kinds of yes. really vulgar things in the windows, in the front. Whatever they sold, yeah. it, it was not nice. Got H. We're early. Yes, we're early today. Just like those thieves were in Selma, California with their $30 million. They are way ahead of their time, weren't they? <laughs> yes, they were. Never been charged, but never been caught. See, I told you he had some some fishy shit in his back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, EL Freight Watcher, just speculation. But what if nothing was stolen? All the fake thieves to scam the insurance company. What if that's what it is, Red? Why? There's no money in there. Huh? Maybe they pilfered the money off over a couple of years and there was no money in there at all. They, all of a sudden they open the door and say, Yes. Oh, we yes. oh we've been robbed. Yeah, oh, we were robbed. Oh, in another hole. We don't know how they did this. Pay us our uh, $30 million, Mr. Insurance Man. 
I you know, they, they, they can hire people to cut the hole and uh, cut yeah. the whole wall or whatever. Hire yeah. people. Yeah, give them a million. Good thinking, DL Freighter. Million left. I got a feeling DL Freighter's involved with this. <laughs> how would how would they have this information? Think about it. <laughs> Mine are just guesses. <laughs> Nine inches. It's like he's measuring a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Kraut's accomplice was the mustard. The Kraut and the mustard. Ah, Colonel Mustard and Captain Kraut. Oh, shit. The Kraut. I had to take a ride in a police car for being out past curfew once. <laughs> You're a criminal, Van Pastor, man. That's You guys just solved the crime. David Grimpy, thank you very much. We're the crime solvers. Mob vlog crime solvers done. That's it. They did it to fuck the insurance man. Red, I think we're on to something. Could I be DL Freighter. You know that. I wonder if there's a reward on this thing. I wonder is is there a reward on this thing? <gasps> I mean, if you figured it out and you had information, wouldn't you think they'd give a reward? DL Freighter Watcher just raised to never trust the official story. You and Rick Charlton need to meet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I love no the conspiracy. I love the conspiracy angle to this. I really do. Because it could be. I mean, honest to God, Red, it could be. What if they did it just to screw the insurance man? And it wouldn't be the first time somebody said, Hey, oh, I had a Jewish fire broke out here. But they, they could have been clipping it off, taking a little bit off at a time over the last five years. That's what I mean. And just right? stay the thing for now. Uh, the devil's advocate. Love you, Adam Flowers. I love you, too. Really do. All of you. I'm, I'm glad all of you are in here having a good time with us and, and sharing in our nonsense and shenanigans. Because platonically, of course. No, 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 no it's fine. I, let's go. Platonically, platonically is fine. It's, it's all good. Wouldn't want it to go much further than that anyway. <laughs> Seriously. Your wife would get upset, I'm sure. <laughs> He's upset enough, man. I don't need to upset her anymore. You know what I mean? I upset her. I'm already, I'm doing the keto, man. Did I tell you I'm back on the keto? Yeah. I'm on the fourth day of keto, yeah. man. I'm, freaking, I'm just an asshole. So, <laughs> not serious, man. Like, I'm just... I'm just, I sit around going cake, sugar, bread, pasta, uh, cannoli, fuck, you know what I mean? Just sit there going, uh, no audits. Yeah, I know. Well, John Wallace, there's ways around the audits, right? Red, don't you know about that? You know, you got to write it off. Oh, yeah. You don't even know what a write off is. I certainly do. <laughs> well, no, but they do. And they're the ones writing it off. You didn't watch Seinfeld. You didn't watch Seinfeld. It's a Seinfeld episode, Red. Okay. Leanne. Uh, I'm sorry. Leanne. I, yeah, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that when I said that. A Jewish fire. That's not what I meant. Um, it's not called that. It's a, There's another saying for it. It's when you, you know, no, maybe it's a Greek fire. You yeah. know, why has it got to be ethnic? Why has it got to be ethnic? Is it really an ethnic thing? Greek lightning is when a rush. Greek fire. lightning. Thank you. That's what it is. It's called Greek lightning, not a Jewish fire. That's the Jew and the Greek laying on the beach in Florida. And he's like, what did you do? Oy vey. Oh, what did you do? You know, he's, yeah. Thank you, Scott. It's Jewish lightning. Yeah. So, so, you know, I had, uh, you know, a store, an appliance store. What happened? Oh, it caught fire, you know, burned down. And the other is, what did you do? He said, well, I had uh, an appliance store too. What <laughs> And, oh, it flooded. Oh, how do you cause that? <laughs> no. Anyway, when the badge shows up, the mouth goes shut. Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, so we started early, and yet we started late. So it's <laughs> we started early, but we started late, and now it's time to wrap. So we're going to be over on Red's channel. We're going to talk about, uh, what are we talking about over there? We're talking about some armored car company. and No, no, Lincoln Towing. Lincoln Towing. We're going to talk about Lincoln Towing. For those of you that don't know who Lincoln Towing was, biggest robbers in the entire world. Thieves, <laughs> bandits. That's who these guys were. 
What did they do? They operated a towing truck company. Yeah. How do you think they really be robbers and thieves? Yes. Anyways, it's been fun, guys. Red, I'll see you next week. We're out. Mob vlog.